Today, I'm gonna to combine two things that I am passionate about. Hiking the Appalachian Trail and true crime. Don't ask me why I'm interested in true crime. I don't really know. I don't even like horror movies, but for some reason, I find true crime really fascinating. So, often people will ask me, how safe is hiking the Appalachian Trail? And I mean, while there are a lot of things that you have to worry about out there, like dehydration, and injury and illness and wildlife, I think overwhelmingly what people want to know about most is the human element of that. Meaning how safe is it in terms of other hikers and other people that are on the trail? So today I'm gonna to talk about the murders that have occurred on the Appalachian Trail. And first I wanna preface this by saying that statistically speaking, the AT is a very safe place to be. Since the trail was completed in 1937, that's when it was when it was fully connected from Georgia to Maine, there have been 13 murders along the Appalachian Trail. And I mean, while that's no number to scoff at, like certainly 13 murders is scary and significant, if you compare that to just a year in a city, it that number is pretty low. So I was living in Washington, D.C. before I started the trail in 2018. And that year that I hiked in 2018, there were 160 murders in Washington, D.C. So when you compare one year in a city versus decades on the trail, the numbers are pretty low and the trail is pretty darn safe. I found personally that there was a really, really supportive community along the Appalachian Trail and if there was information that hikers needed to know, such as like, oh, there's a shady character hanging around this shelter, or this place might not be a safe place to hitchhike, something like that. I felt that information was spread really quickly between hikers. And I also felt like not only were other hikers looking out for each other, there were a lot of trail angels out there really looking out for hikers. The trail communities were really looking out for hikers. And then there were ridge runners working for different AT organizations who were out there taking care of the trail, keeping an eye on things, etc. I also wanna preface this by saying that obviously, even though there haven't been that many murders on the AT, you really need to take precautions when you're going out hiking there. If you're doing a through hike, for example, hiking with another group of people or camping with another group of people could be helpful. Although lots of people hike alone solo and camp solo and that's okay. But of course, being with other people can sometimes be a little more on the safe side. You can bring a GPS device with you that has an SOS or help button that will get you in touch with search and rescue if something does go wrong. So an example of this is the Garmin InReach Mini. That's the one that I have, but there are also other brands such as Spot that are popular. You can also bring along bear spray, keep in touch with friends and family back home. And if you're just a day hiker, you're maybe going out for a shorter stint, I would say always tell someone where you're going, when you're leaving and when you plan to be back so that if you don't come back when you're supposed to be back, someone will know and realize and they can hopefully get some help or send help. In general, the AT is a very safe place to be with a strong community that really watches out for each other, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't take safety precautions. So please do take safety precautions if you're going out on the AT, whether just for a day or for a through hike. From there, I really wanted to get in to these murders and discuss the different ones and what happened, not to scare you by any means, because again, I feel it's a very safe place with a strong community, but you know, just to say that even in the best of places, which I would consider the AT to be among the best of places, bad things do still happen and there are bad people out everywhere that you really need to watch out for and trust your intuition on and all that sort of stuff. Let's get into these 13 murders that have occurred on the Appalachian Trail. Oh, and I'll also point out that while there are a lot of sources out there with information about the murders that have occurred on the trail, the best place that I found with all of this information in one consolidated place has been 
uh, the page of Green Belly Meals, they have an article about this. So I'll link that article below. And I just wanted to say thank you to Green Belly for putting all of this information in one place and making it easy on me because some of the other spots like I have read about a lot of these murders before, especially ahead of my own through hike, but having all of that information in one place is obviously super helpful. So if you want more information about these, feel free to check out that Green Belly page, which I will post below. We'll start in reverse order, talking about the most recent to the least recent murders. The most recent one was really devastating to me just because it was only the year after I completed my own through hike in 2018, this murder occurred in 2019. This made the like international news. I had people coming out of the woodwork asking me what I thought and if I thought the AT was safe. And of course I would say just what I've said to you guys, bad things can happen anywhere at any time, even in the safest of communities. So in 2019, James Jordan, AKA Sovereign, was hanging out along the trail. He was alarming hikers, he was threatening them, he seemed to be um, mentally unstable, having some mental health issues that weren't being treated. Uh, hikers were alerting local authorities and asking them to do something, but I think that on the AT, because you go through so many towns and states and all of that, it's, it's a, a question of whose jurisdiction of it, who can actually do something about this. So unfortunately, because he was moving around a lot, I think nothing was really able to be done, but he was harassing hikers for a long while before anything truly terrible happened. But on the morning of May 11th, 2019, James Jordan was acting erratically and threatening hikers once again. And specifically, he was threatening this group of four hikers. They went in two groups. They took off in opposite directions along the trail to get away from him. And he unfortunately chased down two of them going a certain way. This was in Southern Virginia at around mile point 545 going northbound. And he stabbed both of them with a machete and one of the hikers survived and one of them passed away. That hiker's name was Ronald Sanchez Jr. AKA Stronghold. And he was recovering from PTSD from spending 16 years in the military. And he was really using the outdoors to cope is what I read. And unfortunately he was just, you know, at the wrong place at the wrong time. And he was murdered, which was just, obviously so devastating and I'm so sorry for his friends and family. Everything I read about this guy is just that he was an amazing person and he was really loving the trail. Oh, I'm getting emotional about this because it is really sad. But yes, unfortunately he was in the wrong place at the wrong time and he was stabbed to death by James Jordan, who by the way was eventually found not capable of standing trial because of his mental health issues and he was taken into a mental health facility. By the way, I'm house sitting right now, dog sitting and house sitting, and I have some chickens roaming the yard, so you might be seeing them, you might see the dog, he might pass by, so that's what that's about. <laughs> All right, on to the next one. In August of 2011, some weekend hikers stumbled upon the body of Scott Lilly, who was a southbound through hiker that year. This one remains a mystery. No one was caught or arrested for this murder. They don't know who did it, but his cause of death was asphyxia by suffocation and all of his belongings were taken. They found him at a shelter. This was Cow Camp Gap Shelter in Virginia. And to this day, it remains a mystery. They don't think that the motive was robbery, but because they haven't found the person and they don't know who did it, they're not sure. Next up in 2008, Meredith Emerson was out for a hike with her dog at Blood Mountain in Georgia. She was 24 years old and she was befriended by an older man on the trail, 61 year old Gary Michael Hilton. They hiked together for a while and actually she was a faster hiker so he fell behind for a while. She passed him again on her way back down the mountain where he threatened her with a knife and a baton and told her that he was going to take her money. She was trained in martial arts and so she fought back, but eventually he did overpower her and he took her captive for several days. After three days, he killed her with a handle from a carjack. 
it's believed that he was a sociopath and he was also later convicted of murdering three other people. This next murder took place in New Hampshire. In 2001, 52-year-old Louise Chaput, I hope I said that wrong, I'm so sorry if I didn't, drove from Quebec to New Hampshire to do some hiking. She stayed at a lodge owned by the Appalachian Mountain Club and then the next morning intended to go do some hiking on the Lost Pond Trail. She was never heard from again and eventually her body was found with multiple stab wounds after her family filed a missing persons report. This one also remains a mystery. They don't know what the motive was for the murder and they never caught the killer. So he's still, well, I say he, I assume it's a he, let's be real. But this person is still out there and at large, which gosh, I feel like these ones that were never solved are kind of the scariest, right? Because that person could still be out there. We don't know. So vigilance, always people, vigilance. Next up, oh, this one really gets me every time I hear about this one because this is another one that was unsolved and it's been unsolved for so long and it's just such a sad story. Not that all of them are not sad stories. Of course they are, they're all sad stories. But I feel like this next one was so widely publicized and that by this time, some answer should have come and it just has never come. And so I just kind of find that devastating. Also, sorry, I keep looking down at my computer. I have my computer in my lap. You can't see it, but I can't remember all the stuff in my brain. So I gotta look down. <laughs> anyway, in 1996, two women, Julianne Williams and Lolly Winnens. Again, I hope I said that right. It might be Winans. I'm not sure. So I'm very apologetic if I'm not saying that correctly, but so Julianne Williams and Lolly Winnens, who were 24 and 26, were found dead on June 1st, 1996, at a campsite in Shenandoah National Park. And I also just like love the Shenandoah so much. I lived in Washington DC for several years. That's That was my favorite place to go down hiking. And I just felt like, I don't know, it, it felt safe, you know, like there were always a lot of visitors. It's like one of the more popular national parks, especially on the East Coast. And it just seems crazy that this could happen in a place where, you know, there seemed to be a lot of people around and it just seems like such a pleasant, safe place. But again, bad things can happen anywhere. They were only a quarter mile away from a popular spot that had bars, restaurants, cabins, that there were people at. Apparently they had gone to dinner at one of those places the night before. It's speculated that they might have been followed back to their campsite, but they were a lesbian couple. So it's also speculated that this could have been a hate crime, but since the murder hasn't been solved, it, no one is sure. These girls were out for a section hike. They had just planned to do maybe a week and a half and when they didn't come home or get in touch with their parents as expected, William's father reported her missing and their car was found at the Skyland Lodge, which is a popular place to eat, drink, stay, whatever in the Shenandoah National Park. And they were found bound, gagged, throat slashed, murdered at their campsite, only a quarter mile from this very popular area. Super haunting and sad and scary. And I don't know if this is true, this is also speculation, but like I said, I've read a lot about this one and I've read that there is a theory that this could have actually been a park worker who bounced around from park to park to park and was never caught. So, I mean, who knows, this person might still be alive. This was in 1996, so what's that, 25 years ago? I hope that eventually this guy is caught. Next up, in 1990, Jeffrey Hood and Molly LaRue, who were 26 and 25, were through hiking the AT. They spend the last night of their lives sleeping at Thelma Mark Shelter near Duncannon, Pennsylvania, when they were shot and stabbed by Paul David Cruz, who is a wanted killer on the run from Florida. Molly got it especially bad as her hands were tied behind her back, a rope was tied around her neck, she was raped, and she was stabbed multiple times in the neck, throat, and back. Jeff was shot three times. After these two were killed, the killer took off with all of their possessions and it's speculated that he killed them because both he wanted to rob them and he saw Molly as a rape prospect. Pretty freaking sad. Paul Cruz, the murderer, is serving two life sentences with zero chance of parole. In 1988, Rebecca White was out hiking with her partner, Claudia Brenner, in Pennsylvania's Michaux State Forest. White first encountered Stephen Carr in a public restroom where he asked her for a cigarette. She didn't have one and she was kind of spooked, so she hurried back to her campsite. They ended up moving their campsite because they were 
they were scared and the pair encountered Carr again later that day and he came up upon their campsite when they were having sex and he started shooting at them from 80 feet away. White passed away while Brenner was able to get to the police to get help. This was a hate crime. Carr admits that he did it because he, he was enraged that they were lesbians. He was sentenced to life without parole. This next murder is another one that got a lot of attention and a lot of press coverage and another one that I've heard about pretty extensively. This one, I don't know, this one was really making me feel a little bit haunted on the trail when I was at this particular location. In 1981, Robert Mountford Jr. and Laura Susan Ramsey were through hiking the Appalachian Trail in order to raise money for troubled teens in Maine. They were 27-year-old social workers at the time. The pair were staying at Wapiti Shelter in Virginia when they were murdered by Randall Lee Smith. They were found in their sleeping bags with knife and gunshot wounds. Randall Lee Smith was sentenced to 30 years in prison, but he was out after 15. After he got out of prison, he attempted to kill two more people, two fishermen that he befriended. Both of the fishermen were shot, but they were able to escape and they survived. He attempted to escape from police once again, and he ended up crashing a truck that he stole from one of the victims. He died in, in police custody four days later due to injuries sustained in the crash. In 1975, Janice Balza was sitting at a campfire at the Van Deventer shelter in Tennessee when she was brutally murdered with a hatchet by Paul Bigley, who was a 51-year-old former mental patient. He told police when he confessed to the murder that he coveted her backpack, which is why he murdered her. Bigley was tried and convicted of the murder and he spent the rest of his life in prison. RIP Janice. Joel, Pol Joel Polson was hiking the Appalachian Trail with a friend, Margaret McFadden, when they stopped to spend the night at Low Gap Shelter in Georgia. There, they ran into Ralph Fox, who was also spending the night at the same shelter. The next morning, Fox shot Polson, killing him, and he kidnapped McFadden. Eventually, he released her, she was able to go to police, and that's how they caught him. Fox pled guilty and spent the rest of his life in prison. According to the Appalachian Trail Conservancy, about 3 million people hike on the Appalachian Trail every year. And that's not through hikers, that's all different kinds of hikers, just people enjoying the trail, day hikers, weekenders, through hikers, etc. So considering that many people are out on the trail every single year, obviously, again, these murder rates are extremely low. The AT is a pretty safe place, but of course, anything can happen, you know? And the ATC, ask people that if anything weird happens on the AT, then you report it and let them know and so that they can keep track of these things. So I would say whenever you're going out hiking, just be safe, take precautions, keep your wits about you. If something feels off, then just assume that something is off. If your intuition is trying to tell you something, listen to it. But guys, don't go out there and be in fear all the time. As I said, it's a, it's a fairly safe place to be. It's an amazing, magical place to be. I don't want all of this like bad stuff to cloud what you think of the AT. I just wanna give the information that, you know, bad things do happen out there. So anyway, if you enjoyed this video, give me a like. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I would really appreciate it. Thank you so much for listening, guys. And I'm sorry if I was like a little awkward trying to get the details of all these different murders correct while I was, I was talking and looking down at my computer and all that. So please forgive me for that. But I hope that you enjoyed the video anyway, or at least got some informational content out of it. And I will be back soon with another video. So I'll talk to you all then.